Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you what is assembly scanning in c and .NET and how it helps you keep your code clean. Now, this is not a new thing, this has been around literally for years, but it's becoming more and more prevalent lately and you are actually probably using it, but you don't even know about it. So if you're using like Mediator, uh, Automapper, Fluent Validation, all those packages, very popular ones, you almost certainly are using assembly scanning without knowing. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly what it is, how it works, how it helps you keep your code clean, and how you can implement it yourself for your own needs. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's see what I have here. I have a simple API here, which I've basically took exactly what comes out from the API itself and gave it a bit of structure, and I moved the controller and I made it like this. So we're injecting Mediator here. Um, if you don't know what Mediator is, I do have a video talking about that. So I highly recommend you check that first if you're not familiar with it. And then I'm sending that query to the Mediator handler. And here's the handler, exactly the same logic as you would get out of the box in um, the template. And then I have my startup.cs where I've registered Mediator. And if I just quickly run this, so you see exactly that it's working. Um, I'm running the API now. I can go in Postman, file a request. And as you can see, I'm getting the weather back. Very simple. Now, as you can see here, I'm explicitly registering every single thing about Mediator. And actually there's about four more lines here, which I have actually removed because we don't need them for this example. But realistically, the whole Mediator registration would be around five to 10 lines of, of things I need to register. So the iMediator needs to be transient here. Then when I send it, I publish her. Then I have to register my handler explicitly, the one I created here. And the thing is that now every time I add a new handler, I have to add an extra line for the handler specifying that I want to be registered. And as you can tell, this doesn't really play nice with the whole idea of close for modification or for extension. So Mediator actually, if I go on NuGet, has an extra package. And that package is called mediator.extensions.microsoft.dependency injection. And that extensions.microsoft.dependency injection follows a very specific format. I will explain that in a second. But if we include that and I install this NuGet package, then I no longer need to do all that here. What I can do instead is say services.add mediator. And this method accepts something here. Let's see what it accepts. So there's two of them. One that accepts, let me just decompile the code so you can see it. One that accepts an array of types and one that accepts an array um, of assemblies. So let's go back to that and click that. So as you can see here, an array of assemblies. And this is all related to assembly scanning. So assembly scanning is the process of handing to a method, a type living in an assembly or the assembly information itself. And then that library or that piece of code or that method will scan that assembly and automatically resolve everything related to what you want to do. In this scenario, it will automatically register iMediator, iSender, iPublisher, a bunch of other pipeline stuff, and also every single handler I add in the future without having to explicitly state it. And here, all I need to do is either provide the assembly itself. So I could say assembly.getExecutingAssembly and that would work. And in fact, if I debug the code and I go back and I recall uh, that endpoint, as you can see, this is all working. They have registered by convention. This is all commented out. And in fact, I can now actually delete it. I don't need it anymore. Or the alternative is to give this method a type, literally a class, an interface, and anything that lives in this assembly. So for example, something that lives in this assembly is this startup.cs. So I could say type of startup here. And this then would do internally a dot assembly. And in the same fashion, would find the assembly that this type lives in. And I could have done the same previously as well. So both of them will actually work. Usually these methods allow you to specify either a type or the assembly itself. The type just makes it convenient for you. Now here's something you might have not seen before with assembly scanning. It's a very good practice generally to create what's called an assembly marker. An assembly marker usually is an interface, and I'm gonna go ahead and create that here, specifically designed to help you identify an assembly by a type in that assembly. So in this scenario, I'm gonna create an iAPI assembly marker. There we go. That is an empty interface. I 
don't need to do anything with it. It just needs to live somewhere within this project and in return during compilation, the assembly. And then I can take that name and use that instead. The reason being that now I'm making explicit what I'm passing down here. Because if you just see me, for example, passing down the uh, weather forecast, the thing would work fine, but then you're like, why is this method accepting the type of the weather forecast? It doesn't really make any sense. However, if I explicitly use an assembly marker, and in fact, if I even go here and add a summary and say this uh, assembly marker is used for assembly scanning, then people will know what this is and how it works. And it's a very good practice to do that. And actually, this is not unique to Mediator. If I go to NuGet here and I say dependency injection, if I could actually spell it correctly, then you'll see that Automapper, Autofag, um, Fluent Validation, App Metrics, Mass Transit, all of them usually follow the exact same pattern. And that's obviously specific assembly scanning for Microsoft's built-in DI container. Some other packages might have alternatives. So some of them might be for dependency injection, the Microsoft one, some of them might be for the fact, some of them might be structure map, whatever. So this is not unique to a uh, mediator. However, some libraries like to give better names to these types of methods because at mediator, unless you actually read the summary, which says exactly uh, what's going on, it doesn't really give you uh, details on what those types are. I mean, the name of the parameter is good enough, but if you don't know what an assembly marker is, uh, an assembly scanning, then you might be a bit lost. So a better example of naming for this type of thing is actually Fluent Validation. So if I add Fluent Validation here, and again, if you don't know what it is, I'm not going to show the actual uh, library here, but I do have a video for it. It makes validation really, really nice and easy. So if I go here and I say services dot add validation, you can actually see that it says add validators and it has a better name for the method. It has a method called add validators from assemblies. And this method accepts, as you can see here, uh, an array of assemblies or an enumerable of assemblies. It also says add validators from assembly. If you want to specify one, add validators from assembly containing, and that accepts an array of types, and then add validators from assembly containing and a specific type um, in that same fashion. So you do something like this. So this is a way more appropriate name to make explicit what you mean by accepting a T type parameter or an array of types or an array of assemblies. Um, it is a pretty common pattern, but I do prefer Fluent Validator's approach with the more appropriate naming. That being said, as long as you document all this, it doesn't really matter, but it really makes it easy for people who are not familiar with the concept to pick it up really quickly. Now, enough with that. Let me just delete this. And in fact, let me just revert it to the point where we didn't have the add mediator thing. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to remove that new package here. So let's go, bam, you go away and you go away. So how do you write that type of thing yourself? How do you write your own assembly scanning? Well, actually, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you an approach here for dependency injection registration that I no longer use, but it makes for a good example. I will explain what I use as I go in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder here called um, installers. And actually, I'm not going to create a folder. I'm going to create a project because that showcases it even better. So I'm going to call that uh, assembly scanning dot in IOC. Yeah, why not IOC? Do that. So no, I don't need a class one. What I do need is to add a couple of new good packages here. So Microsoft dot dependency injection abstractions. Yep, here we go. And I think also configuration abstractions. That should be enough. Great. And I'm going to create a new uh, interface here. And I'm going to call that I installer. And that I installer will have a void add services method. And this would accept a service collection and an I configuration here. So that should be enough. I'm also going to add a property here. I'm going to have it be an int and call it order. And that's going to be a getter only property at minus one. That's it. So now the idea is that in the main API, you're going to have um, a folder called installers. And we're going to move our registration, the IOC there. So first I need my MVC installer. Did I say controller? I meant installer. So MVC installer. And I'm also going to have the, let's say mediator installer. There we go. And now these things need to implement the I installer interface. But for that to happen, we need to refer to the project. Writer does that for us. So here is where we register 
our services. And if we want the order to be different, we can just override the property. So the idea is that we take all that mediator goodness and we're moving it in there. And we're doing the same, go, yep. And we're doing the same for the MVC stuff. So add controllers and add swagger. This would go in the MVC installer, which again, implements the I installer, implements that, here we go. So now we moved that there, but nothing really registers them. So what we want to do is have something like services.add installers. And this method doesn't exist right now. So we're going to go ahead and create that in here in that IOC project. So I'm going to call this installer extensions and I'm going to make that a static class and I'm going to add a public void, a public static void actually, add installers. And this will accept the I service collection, so services, and also the I configuration. Here we go. Let's break that to a new line so you can see. And here's when I'm going to do my assembly scanning. Now, obviously I didn't pass um, an assembly here. So the idea is that we get the uh, executing assembly to uh, register by convention there. I tend to not recommend this approach in actual projects that other people will use as well, because it doesn't make the intent explicit. Sometimes you actually might want to make the type um, explicit instead of inferred by the executing assembly. But in that scenario, I'm going to show you how you can do it both ways. So we have this method, but really we're going to need three more. So why do I say that? Well, because we're going to have a lot of overloading happening here. So this is the add installers, but you can also have a public static void called add installers from assembly containing, same way that uh, Fluent Validation does it. And now I'm still going to have all that. So bam, but I'm also going to have a T marker here. And that T marker will be passed down from the startup.cs and used by the next overload that we're going to need, which is the public static void add installers from assemblies containing. And this is another overload that takes the same parameters here, but also a params type array called assembly markers. And we're almost there. We need the last overload, which is not really overloads in the grand scheme of things. They all have different names, but internally one uses the other. Um, so static void um, add installers from assemblies, which is ultimately where we're going to implement the logic. So we're going to take the same stuff. So this goes here, but instead of calling this assembly markers, this is now assemblies and they're no longer types, they are assembly. Here we go. And now's the time where we're actually going to implement all this. So first, what we want to do is say add installers from assemblies here. So we're going to call that from this method and say services configuration and then assembly dot get executing assembly. Then we're going to come here and say add installers from assemblies containing the method below. And we're going to say services configuration and then type of T marker. So we are using it to call this method here. And now in return here, we're going to get assemblies from types. So we're going to say assemblies equals assembly markers dot select. And we're going to select the assemblies it plus that. And actually, I think we need to to array this. Yeah, we do. And this will call the one below. So add installers from assemblies configuration and then assemblies. And this is everything we need for the overload. So there's many ways now to register this one with a T marker, one with a type array and one with the assembly array. And this, the assembly array is where we're going to actually do our logic for the scanning. So first I'm going to say assemblies dot for each. I'm going to for each loop the assemblies. I'm going to find all the installer types. So basically, I'm going to find anything in wherever this assembly is, where a thing that implements the I installer interface exists. That's the main idea. And to do that, I'm going to say assembly dot defined types dot where, and I'm going to say type of I installer dot is assignable from X, which is um, the type and X is not an interface. And also X is not abstract. So is abstract. It's not. Here we go. And this should give us all the installer types. Now, in this specific scenario, we're not doing any complicated dependency injection uh, on the instantiation of this installer. You cannot actually uh, inject anything from it. That's a restriction I have set to the project. If you wanted to do, you would have to pass down the um, service provider. However, for this example, because you can actually get the service provider every time you register, well, anything here. So if I do add transient, I can use the service provider here, as you can see here, then there's no point in doing that. 
So for this example, we won't need any complicated instantiation. All I'm going to say is installers, and I'm going to say installer types dot select activator dot create instance, and then I'm going to cast that to an I installer. Simple as that. And then I'm just going to say installers dot for each, and you might even want to actually order them. So order by, and that's depending on how you do your ordering. You might do it ascending or descending. That's up to you. Higher number means higher, lower might mean higher, depending on how you go about it. So I'm leaving that to you. And then all you need to do is say installer dot add services and pass down the services and the configuration. And actually that's it. There is nothing else to it. And now we need to uh, import this here for it to work. And actually, you know what? Let's not have this one that just uses the executing assembly. It doesn't make any sense. Um, normally, you would just explicitly ask from the user to pass down the type. Um, so I'm going to do the same, and I'm just going to remove this add installers altogether and use one of the ones we have already. So this one instead. So add installers from assembly containing the IAPI marker that we just made here and pass down the configuration. So this reads nicer. That's the approach you should use. Never try to infer the uh, assembly automatically because you might actually end up using the wrong thing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and add a breakpoint and let's see what happens. So I'm going to run that and it's using the assembly, which is the right one, the API one, and it's getting the types. It should find two of them, as you can see. Both of them are found, they are instantiated, and they are called so you can see that it goes in here and it installs all the stuff that it needs to. This is working, by the way, nothing changed there. And as you're running new stuff, you can just create an installer, add the stuff there, and you don't have to update your startup.cs basically ever again. Uh, unless you want to add another marker for another thing you're going to register. Now, I don't recommend you using this approach. Um, I highly recommend you use the extension method based approach where you give everything a nice name and you do register it one by one in the startup.cs. So you just group things together and you say add swagger or add MVC or add everything. Uh, but if you want to use it, knock yourself out. I'm not going to prevent you from doing it. Just a few comments before I wrap this up. The use of reflection here to instantiate the classes doesn't play anything in terms of performance because um, this is only used on startup to wire up things and this won't affect actual runtime performance. Um, if you want to use the um, dependency injection framework here, you might want to have to create a delegate that accepts a type and returns an object, um, effectively something like this, or something like a public delegate that returns a null object maybe, or just an object named service provider or something like that. And then that accepts a type. And then you can use that using the activator utilities class dot um, create instance, which can do uh, something like this. Um, I've shown this in other videos. I'm not going to bother now because that's outside of the scope for the video. But just so you know, you can totally do that. And using reflection here doesn't really affect your performance at all, actually. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.